Weapon restricted runs, while simple on paper, always seem to bring with them their very own unique set of challenges. Today's idea has actually been one of the most consistently requested videos on the channel now for as far back as I can remember, probably due to how difficult it can be just to have a reliable source of them. If anything, if you ask me, that just makes things more interesting, so I guess today's the day we finally figure out, can you beat Fallout New Vegas with only throwing spears? As mentioned, the main drawback of using throwing spears is just trying to find enough to use regularly, as outside of the 10 you could start with thanks to the Courier Stash DLC, the only reliable way to get more is by looting them from Legion soldiers, as they are rarely, if ever, sold by most merchants. I can already tell this is going to be a fun one, so with all that out of the way, let's begin. I've never really made a throwing spear-esque build before, so this is mostly all new to me. What I do know is that they are classified as melee weapons, despite only half of that being true, so I suppose strength is important. The rest of the points were then funneled into intelligence, endurance and agility. Normally I don't bother with agility, but from the brief experience I have with throwing weapons in New Vegas, I know one thing, and that's that I suck with them. So having an aimbot in my pocket will hopefully go a long way to circumvent that issue. Onto my tag skills and I take melee weapons, sneak and speech. Melee weapons for increased damage of course, and speech simply to quickly allow me access to Mick and Ralph's secret inventory, as they are one of the handful of vendors that have a very small chance of even selling a few spears. As for sneak, well the spears are actually silent weapons, so doubling down on that aspect to make a semi-sneak build seemed like a good idea at the time. Finally for traits I went with Wild Wasteland and Heavy Handed. I have no idea whether Heavy Handed actually affects throwing spears, but I guess we'll see. Getting full control I head to Chet to check for spears, naturally he has none, so I just buy and steal armour from him instead. As mentioned I do start with 10 throwing spears thanks to the DLC, so I can at the very least head over to the saloon and combine two of my tag skills together as I stealthily impale Cobb's head to one of the nearby photo frames. Spears may be limited, but experience is still nice to have, so I end up helping out with the Ghost Town gunfight quest. Other than using my sneak to pass a skill check with Trudy, I do the absolute bare minimum and still come out victorious. For what it's worth I use two of my precious spears here. The first only manages to injure, whereas the second is quite clearly more of a kill shot as it sends someone's head into the next dimension. The townsfolk and remnants of the beetles manage to clear out the rest, I take my reward, and after doing something with my level up, begin to head towards Sloan. I imagine it's quite clear that I'm making my way towards Vegas, or at least that's where I should be heading in the hopes of finding more spears, but in actuality I ended up getting sidetracked a few times too many. First off, I arrived in Sloan where I blatantly stole the wages of the quarry workers, Normally they would be more annoyed by this, but at the time they were more interested in beating up this stray powder ganger who was unfortunate enough to come within smacking distance of the chomps. Works for me as I mark Hidden Valley for future reference on the map and then head through the Indiana Jones shortcut and decide to just force my way through the boulder with sheer willpower. It was around here that I decided on my plan for the rest of the run, and by that I mean the faction I'd be buddying up with, and I very quickly decided on house. Let me explain my reasoning behind this as I make my way for the substation. I didn't want to side with Yes Man as it's too easy for a run like this, and I have sided with the NCR the most, so didn't feel like going that route again. But Nesbit, I hear you mistype in the comments, wouldn't it make the most sense to join the Legion as they use spears? Why yes, that would make sense on paper, but you see, Legion corpses are also the best consistent supply of spears I can think of, and something tells me they won't like it if I start murdering them on the grounds of Caveman need more spear. All that leaves is house, and in the end he is also my preferred way of doing things, so it works out well for me. After marking the substation, seeing how sidetracking is my passion, I mosey on over to Boulder City to help out the situation there. Really, what I want here is Benny's lighter, and I'm willing to get it by any means necessary. Violence. That means violence. It's okay though, because I equip my moss camo, and therefore have a camo index of 100, rendering me completely invisible. As you can imagine, with stealth this good, I can easily dispatch Jessup and Nameless Great Khan with one spear each to the head. After grabbing the lighter, I head back outside, free the hostages, and then let the NCR deal with the problem from there. With nothing else of worth mentioning or doing in Boulder City, I continue to avoid the main plot and do things backwards as I made my way for Novak. Simply put, Cliff Briscoe also may sell me throwing spears, but guess what, he in fact will not, because everybody secretly hates spears in the Mojave. With four spears to my name, I was becoming desperate, so it was off to Nelson in the hopes I could steal some from the Legion as by this point, I had been dumping all of my levels into Sneak. On the way, I met this charming gentleman, the game may call him Wastelander, but I nicknamed him Splody, don't think I need to go over why. Making it to Nelson, and to keep things brief, know that I checked every single container in soldiers pockets and didn't come across even a single throwing spear. For the time being I could only think of one more place nearby that may prove useful, and that's the non-hostile legion trips just outside of Ranger Station Charlie. These fellows move around a little so they can be a pain in the ass to steal from, but whenever I was able to track them down I was overjoyed to see that they did in fact have spears, which I most certainly stole. From these three soldiers I was able to get 7 more spears, bringing my total up to 11. 
After that simple mathematics lesson with Nurbit, it was high time I moved away for Vegas to not only start the main quest, but to look for more weapons. Blake had none, Mick had none, Special Mick had none, I am distraught. It's very clear now that trying to purchase them is just not feasible, so here's hoping I can find a group of Legion soldiers with a good number of spears, or this is going to be a pacifist run with extra steps. Thanks to the 10mm submachine guns I looted and sold from the cans in Boulder City, I have more than enough caps to legally enter the strip this way and can get down to business to defeat Benny. 30 speech and a gold-plated lighter is all it takes for Swank to turn on his boss and grant me access to my weapons while in the tops. This means, after having a brief chat with Smiley here, I can arrange for Benny's assassination. Once more, stealth is the name of the game, so I excel at creating more severed head-shaped decorations for the room. Not sure what the rest of the chairman will think about this ploy, so after trying and failing to make it look like an accident, I instead opted for the foolproof strat of Weekend at Benny's to distract his men just long enough that I can make it back to Mr. House and his unskillable cutscenes. Well, House wants me to head to the fort, and honestly, that sounds like a wonderful idea, as I couldn't possibly think of anywhere better to get more throwing sp three. I got a grand total of three spears from the entirety of Cottonwood Cove and the fort. This includes pickpocketing, by the way, just so we're clear. It's times like this I am seriously beginning to question why I cannot just craft them at a workbench, but I digress. Some of the Legion soldiers do have spears, but they have them equipped, meaning the only way to get them is to pry them from their cold, dead hands. The issue there is the fact that I cannot carry spears into the main part of Caesar's camp, so therefore I have no way of killing them. Plus, more often than not, I'll just end up breaking even on spears, as they tend to only drop a handful, so any I use to take them down, I am basically refunded with, and therefore, back to where I started. For what it's worth, I did try stealing my spears back out of the container when I made it to the fort, but as expected, as soon as I got them back, the Legion opened fire on me and very quickly wiped me out. That means I was stuck with what I had yet again, so I was on to deal with the situation in the bunker. Wanting to get some mileage out of my weapons, I used two as soon as I entered the bunker, so I could take out the Protectron at the entrance. I then took down two more with three throwing spears as I was able to catch one unaware, and one shot him from stealth. As I didn't want to get completely eviscerated on my way out, I took down the two nearby turrets, costing me another two spears for each one. Down to my last six spears, I managed to just skip past the rest of the robots and killer turrets, and insert the chip with little to no issue. The one, and only silver lining as far as I'm concerned about not being able to buy spears, is that all of the caps I earn can be spent on healing supplies and armour, so while attacking is certainly a concern, I am at the very least padded up to the max. Despite my very primitive way of dealing with situations, House is nevertheless pleased with the results. Given my lack of spears, it would be wise to assume my next stop will be going back to the Legion soldiers near Charlie in hopes I can steal more spears. And while that is on my to-do list, for some reason, I looked at my inventory and for whatever reason thought, yeah, six spears is way more than enough to take out the Brotherhood. Obviously, there is no way in hell I'm taking them all out this way, but I only need to take out the leaders to grab the key cards and dispose of the rest that way. As simple as it would be to sneak up behind Dobson and put a spear in his head, I do that almost every time I go to meet the Brotherhood, so for once, I made use of the fact that I'd already been to the 188 trading post and used the key the Brotherhood left under the mat right before sending it back to where it belongs. Conveniently enough, the three people who have the key cards don't wear any kind of head protection, so it only takes a single spear each to get what I need. Harden will put a helmet on, but only if he's hostile, so I make sure to take him out first and then go for Scribe Taggart. Usually it makes the most sense to get Taggart's key last, but you see, once you kill McNamara, no matter if you do so well hidden, the entirety of the Brotherhood will become hostile towards you, kind of like how the Legion NCR will if you kill Caesar or Colonel Murr. Thanks to a stealth boy, I'm able to get away mostly unharmed. That was at least until I got upstairs anyway. Thankfully, I had just enough supplies to heal through the turrets and make it outside, and once again, the Brotherhood are dead and buried in one fell swoop. Now it was time for more spears, and I wasn't ready to give up on the merchants just yet, but to cut a long boring story short, I really should have. Even after waiting for Blake and Mick's stocks to refresh multiple times, the best I ever got was two whole spears from one of them at any given time. So in other words, it was back to the soldiers outside Charlie in the hopes that they had something for me. And boy, did they. The three soldiers from before now all had five or six spears each, which is obviously a substantial improvement from before. So, after stealing what they had, I would have been content with just fast traveling away, waiting for them to refill, and then just rinse and repeat until I was satisfied. But given the area, I noticed I was quite close to the Legion camp you rescued the Powder Gangers from in the booted quest, and thought to try in that direction to see if I could find more soldiers. I never made it to the camp this time as I came upon some soldiers sleeping in a few makeshift beds, and to my utter joy, some of them were carrying up to 12 throwing spears each. For reference, here is where I am on the map. I made sure to mark it for myself as there are Legion soldiers just patrolling the area, and they would indeed refill their supply of throwing spears every few days, meaning, thanks to my maxed out sneak skill, I now had a very reliable source of spears to do with as I saw fit. By the time I was finished with the initial haul, I had 44 throwing spears, which for the time being, seemed like more than enough for what was to come next. As I have been through this story just a couple of times, I am aware that my next mission will be to make contact with the boomers, so that's where I'm off to next. 
Reveling in my overwhelming supply of spears, at least compared to how many I had before anyway, I celebrated by tossing one right into George's butt. I did not need George's caps by any means, I just thought I'd start the killing off strong before I made my way inside Nellis. Pearl is very nice to me, which is always appreciated. I of course return that kindness by letting her have a really nice look at the nearby wall. This of course does not sit well with the rest of the boomers, or at least this one rando who decided to avenge his leader. Shocker, it did not go well for them. With my sneakiness and headband, I began to channel my inner solid snake as I snuck around the base and then began to pick off the leaders of the tribe one at a time. Loyal was the only one of worth, and by that I mean he took three spears to go down as opposed to the normal one or two. The good thing about House is he isn't all that bothered about using political assassination to further his goals, so we don't get holed up in the dead boomers thing for too long before he sends me over to Gamora to find out what's going on. In the most shocking twist of this run, I actually decided to go along with this quest. I figured that if I just walked in, threw a few spears and called it a day, that I would end up moving straight onto the Battle of Hoover Dam, and I didn't want to wrap things up quite so soon. However, as expected, throwing spears are not holdout weapons, and therefore cannot be snuck inside the casino, so I would have to get creative. Well, I say creative, but this entire quest can be finished without lifting a finger if you have a high enough speech stat, as you can convince the bosses to turn on each other at the end. As my speech is currently sitting at 30, that's not going to happen. The rest of the quest does play out how it usually would, I just use stealth and pickpocketing to get the necessary blackmail items that I need to progress. After melting the thermite and my eyeballs, it was time to go with Kachinu to have a chat with the bosses. The fact they have guns should show you exactly how this is going to go down. Lacking any way to defend myself, I once again tap into my sticky fingers and steal any and all ammo from Nero and Big Sal before sitting down. Therefore, when they go to attack me, they have to resort to their bare hands. This means Kachina was more than a match for Big Sal as he takes him down within a few seconds, all the while Nero attempts to beat me down, while I stand around and show off my Senator Armstrong impression. Real talk, it took Kachino nearly two minutes to take down Nero. For whatever reason, he came down with an exceptionally bad case of the XCOM aim and could just not land a shot for the life of him. Eventually, his accuracy was above 90% and he's able to finish the job. House is very pleased with me, probably because for once in my life I didn't solve the murder's problem by filling the place with bloodstained suits and dead men. Therefore, it's off to the substation with me now, which is as simple as sitting through two quick load screens, pressing the button, and now it's time to end the game. Except, I had a few things I wanted to take care of first. Mainly, I would need a lot more spears if I wanted any hope of taking down the Legate and his men. As I have been working with House, I am now at a point where the Legion will attack me on sight. Fortunately, I did prepare for this situation and made sure to get myself a set of Legion armor before they all started throwing spears at me. The disguise of course worked wonders and I'm able to resupply myself yet again, but this time I am a lot more greedy and less patient, so I started to kill off some of the soldiers who had spears equipped. I made sure to do so from stealth as to not ruin my disguise, and it worked like a charm. I even went so far as to make my way to the camp and rescue the powder gangers, or at least I think I rescued them. Like, I killed all the Legion soldiers and cut their bonds, and watched them run off into the distance, but then not a few moments later I get a notification telling me that the quest had failed. I was never able to find the bodies, but if I had to guess, I'd say the idiots probably ran into the NCR patrol that are usually just down the way from here. Greed came over me once again, as noticing I was a short jog away from Nipton, I figured I could get just a couple more spears. Making sure I had my weapon ready for the fight, and it seems like I have two choices. I can either use the throwing spear, or if I'm feeling up to it, the throwing spear. Let me know in the comments which one you think I should have used. From this point on, I'm not sure what exactly happened, but from here to the end of the game, things just got really bizarre. Starting with my encounter with Foxboy, I'm just going to let it play out because talking over it wouldn't do it justice. They hardly even know. They hardly even know. No idea what just happened, but I assume it's a combination of things working against each other. Like, Vault Base is always meant to approach the player and speak with them in Nipton, so he isn't hostile. But then I had a bad reputation with the Legion, so he should be hostile. But then again, I am wearing Legion uniform, so I shouldn't be hostile. I think all of that was just far too much for the game to handle. No clue why it forced me into a trade with him though. Next attempt, and one that is far less cursed. I get just close enough to lure Volbeis out into the street and then slowly back up into the middle of town where he of course loses sight of me. Once this happens, I just toss a single spear in his direction and he is no longer a threat to the game's code. From here, I move around the back of the houses to the right and silently pick off the four recruits with four spears. Don't worry, they are all carrying at least one spear, so I replenish my ammunition, so to speak. 
When the final recruit goes down, I then use two final throwing spears on the Mongols and complete my task in Nipton. Fine, Oliver Schwanek also got rocked as well. Are you happy? Good. Damn time. With 45 spears to fight the Ligon and his men with, I think it should come as no surprise that I decide to just sneak my way to the camp and avoid as much combat as possible. Or at least that's what I say, but I did take the time to take out the two NCR heavies inside the dam for some reason. The best part about siding with Mr. House or Yes Man is of course having the backup in the form of the Securitrons. Only one will actually follow you into the Legate's camp, but thanks again to my Legion uniform, I can have them ignore me while they are focused on him, which means I can silently take them out. To face down the Legate, I needed every advantage I could afford, so I pumped myself full of drugs and strength enhancers and hoped for the best. The well-timed use of his stealth boy allowed me to start the fight with a powerful sneak attack critical that brought Lanius down to just above half health. The game is on normal difficulty by the way, so this is definitely a lot more damage than I had anticipated. My follow-up attacks and vats either missed him entirely or just didn't affect him as his health didn't seem to budge. Thankfully, I was invisible still, so he just destroyed my Securitron instead. Afterwards, him and his men turned their attention towards me. I thought I was doomed, but one more spear was just enough to take him below half health, causing him to disengage and begin the second phase of the fight. This is where things became a complete joke, and despite it being at one, luck was clearly still on my side. With Lanius momentarily retreating, I decided to focus on his man to thin out the pack, as even his Praetorians went down to two back-to-back -back spears. But at this stage, the Legate decided to switch to his grenades, and for whatever reason, he thought it would be a good idea to charge me with them and just drop them at his feet. This knocked the Legate himself down, and to capitalise, I entered Vats to get as many headshots on him as possible as he was getting up. He managed to throw one last grenade before I killed him, but in all honesty, that grenade helped me more than him, as it weakened or straight up killed his nearby reinforcements. The final members of the Legion proved more time consuming than anything else, not because they had a lot of health, but for some reason I just couldn't hit any of them for the life of me, whether it was free aiming or vats. All I had left in my name now was three spears, so naturally I threw all of them in General Oliver's direction as he opened the gate. I then spoke with House, somehow glitched out the ending slideshow, got retweeted by the director of New Vegas, finishing the game and proving yes, you can indeed beat Fallout New Vegas with only throwing spears. Okay, so it goes without saying, the single worst part of this run was just trying to find a reliable source of throwing spears. In the end, I was surprised by how much damage they were able to inflict. And let's keep in mind this was without the piercing strike perk that allows them to ignore a decent amount of armor as well. So if for whatever reason you all want to attempt this, I recommend getting that perk. Probably along with a mod that either adds more of them into the game or just allows you to craft them. Regardless, that's going to be in this challenge video. If you enjoyed what you saw, continue the video a like. If you're interested in more challenges in the future, feel free to subscribe to one of these videos out every week. My name's Nerbert, everyone, I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye.